Hello there and welcome to our uh, Meet Richmond Olympians series. I'm here with uh, Shaw Gordon, uh, Richmond fencer, uh, an Olymp Olympic debutante uh, from his team base in Montreal. Is that correct, Shaw? That's correct, Alan. Awesome. And then Shaw, for those of you who don't know, is a, an alumnus of Richmond Secondary uh, and one of his claim to fame, I guess, in fencing is winning the, the Ivy League Championship in 2016 with his University of Pennsylvania team. Uh, he is a native of Israel, uh, age 26, uh, and it will be his birthday next week. Uh, and unfortunately, or not unfortunately, that he will be spending that on a plane en route to Japan. Is that correct, Shaw? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So do you, do you actually get to celebrate your birthday at all, or does it not exist this year? I mean, uh, I guess I'll do something little with the team. Uh, we'll find a way to celebrate how we can. <laughs> But it will be a special one for sure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's not much. It's a it's, it's a birthday you're willing to sacrifice. I, I'd imagine. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so you, Shaw, you've represented Canada many times at the Pan American Games and uh, World Championships, and picked up quite a few silver medals along the way. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I've participated in uh, two Pan American Games. Um, as a team, uh, we won silver twice, uh, losing in the final to the United States. And uh, individually, at the last Pan Am Games in uh, Peru, I finished third individually. So it was quite a successful competition for me and uh, for the team as a whole. So get, given your background, you're, you have a lot of experience at the top level, uh, but this being your first Olympics, how, how is your preparation, your mindset, how is that comparing to your previous experience? Yeah, absolutely. It's my first Olympic Games and it's a very unique uh, competition from what I've heard. Um, fencing, uh, the, the entire competition uh, goes down in one day. So you really have to be ready on that one day to perform uh, at the best of your abilities. So it's, uh, it's very mental. I, there's a lot of nerves, that's for sure. So in regards to my preparation, I've been uh, working with a sports psychologist kind of to prepare for that. And during practices, especially as we inch closer and closer, trying to replicate some of the conditions that we might have uh, at the games. Again, mm -hmm. these, these games are gonna be very, very special. Um, with all the health protocols, yeah. um, the we have to be flexible as athletes in regards to our warm up routine and uh, the timeline as well. Um, so we're trying to replicate that in our training yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So uh, you know, once I compete, I'll be a little bit uh, more familiar. And you mentioned the trying to replicate the conditions uh, for event day. What 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 will what will those conditions be? Well, for one, um, the competition goes straight into direct elimination. Usually when I compete uh, at a World Cup, for example, there is a, a round robin to start the competition and that determines uh, the tableau, um, the direct elimination uh, bracket, and then you compete in a direct elimination bout. Um, at the Olympics, there is no uh, round robin, there's no pool. so you immediately uh, compete and if you lose, um, that's it. Those are the Olympics for you. So the focus has to be there and the intensity has to be there right from the beginning. So yeah. we've been practicing with that and uh, the bouts are gonna be spaced out um, as you, know, as, uh, you uh, progress through the day. Uh, so we've been trying to do that as well in our practices. And, and, and so you're flying out on the 10th, bordering into the 11th on your birthday there and uh in the first event are you only competing in one event this, this time yeah i'm only competing in the individual men's saber okay. competition oh, men's saber okay and and what date is that on that is on the 24th of july so it's uh right at the beginning of the game yeah and um what time will that be do you know the competition itself starts at uh, 9 a.m. Okay. Um, and uh, it will last the entire day and uh, we'll have 
the fi semifinals and finals uh, closer to the evening, at around 6 p.m., yeah. I believe. So thinking ahead to your preparation on the day, or, or what, what are you going to do on the day of your big event? How do, how do, you, how do you prepare for that? Yeah, I mean, uh, it will be very, very important uh, not to get too nervous. Uh, you know, excite. It's it, of course it's important to be excited, and uh, I mean, it's uh, maybe not once in a lifetime experience, but it doesn't happen so often. So I'm sure the nerves will be there. Uh, but I've been working towards this, so mm -hmm. I will be try to remain. I'll try to remain cool and uh, collected, and uh, just take it one touch at a time. Um, it's a long day. I'll just try to focus on the actions themselves, not the results, not anything else, just purely sensing. Yeah. And uh, I think that's going to be my focus yeah. throughout the day. And then just going back a little bit, well, going back a, a fair bit, uh, you started fencing at the age of seven. I understand yeah. after watching a Zorro cartoon. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny because I've told that story so many times that all my family members keep telling me don't tell you know change the story it's getting repetitive but it, that's how I started it uh, I started when I was seven I was living in Italy at the time and Italy has a long tradition of fencing it's quite a popular okay. sport there yeah. more than in Canada although mm -hmm. it's growing here as well and uh, yeah, it's just, my passion really stemmed from watching cartoons, watching the Zorro movies. Yeah. That's how it started. Nice, <laughs> nice. And I also understand you have a nickname, Ice Daddy. Yes. Are you going yeah. to explain? Sure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it might not be as exciting as people think, but uh, it, it started at uh, the University of Pennsylvania when I was doing my studies there. And uh, they have an amazing facility uh, for recovery. Uh, and I would use uh, the ice bath quite often. Oh, so that's, that's where it stems from. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, looking after the body uh, after a long training. Okay, okay. That's, okay, yeah. It's, not, it's not, as, uh, not as bad as what people may have thought. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And so, what, so Shal, what essentially, how do you rate your chances of getting somewhere near the podium? Well, on paper, I'm definitely an underdog. Uh, my current international ranking is uh, 20th, so uh, I'm not a favorite in that regard, um, but I mean, the last year and a half has been crazy. We, we've had only one competition. We've had a lot, I've had a lot of time to mentally digest, uh, you know, having the opportunity to go to the Olympics and what it would mean for me, uh, because usually the qualification period is a, it's a one year period and by the time you finish it and the Olympics start, you don't really have that much time. So these are my first Olympic Games. And, uh, you know, if you go back to 2020, my goal was to qualify. That was the goal and uh, just to take part in, in, in those games. Uh, and then we had, of course, such a long break in between. Uh, so my goals have shifted. And while I'm an underdog and I know that, uh, my goals are really try to get as close to the podium as possible. To step on the podium, that would be the dream. And I've been working very hard uh, to try to make that possible. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed. We'll all have our fingers crossed here for you, Shaw. Uh, so, listen, thanks very much for your time. Uh, on behalf of everyone at the Richmond News and on behalf of our readers, we wish you the best of luck in Tokyo. Thank you so much.